Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Trilby and welcome to my top 10 or maybe top 12 most anticipated movies of 2016. Now yes, this is a new location, this is actually where I'm living and I'm sorry that there are shelves and the background's a bit bland but look this, this is my room. This is what my room actually looks like so this is not a permanent solution. Right now I'm working on my top 10 best and my top 10 worst films of 2015. So before we get to those, I just thought I'd give you my top 12 most anticipated movies of 2016. Why top 12 and not top 10, even though the title says top 10? Because I like to subvert expectations. I like to deliver more than promised. I like to exceed and I like to impress you guys. And okay, I had 12 films and top 10 just sounds better in the title, okay? Now I'm not going to be talking about staggered UK release date films that are actually 2015 films but got released this year in the UK. Although I am looking forward to Concussion, Spotlight, Anomalisa, Trombo, definitely Trombo, and finally Goosebumps because Goosebumps is getting released in February in the UK. February, it's a Halloween movie. So with that out of the way, let's get to number 12. Number 12, Doctor Strange. Scott Derrickson did a fantastic job with Sinister in 2012, in fact that made my top 10 best movies of the year, and while Deliver Us from Evil last year did actually make it onto my worst of list, I don't know, I think the fact that he's working under the Marvel umbrella will dictate some sort of quality, and Benedict Cumberbatch, we saw those photos from Entertainment Weekly, that he looks amazing as Doctor Strange, so it's just a great look, and while we may wonder what could have been with Joaquin Phoenix in the role as Doctor Stephen Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme, I think Cumberbatch will do a terrific job. We don't know much about this movie other than some great pieces of concept art that was released, and also those Entertainment Weekly photos, and of course it's Marvel, so you're naturally hyped, but Doctor Strange, I think could be something special if it is handled properly. Number 11, Star Wars Rogue One. Well, we are now living in a post-Force Awakens world. The Force Awakens is now past tense. That's so weird to think about, but this is now the world we are currently living in. And the next movie is an anthology, Star Wars story, spin-off, side sequel, whatever, side prequel, which takes place before the events of Episode 4 in New Hope, and details the plot in which we see the theft of the Death Star plans that even started this whole thing. The reason I'm not massively hyped why it's so low on the list is because, while I do like Star Wars a lot and I enjoyed The Force Awakens, I'm not a massive Star Wars fan. I like the films, and I think Empire Strikes Back and A New Hope are legitimately awesome. I just don't have that incredible emotional attachment which caused grown men to cry when watching The Force Awakens trailer. That's just not me. However, that having been said, The Force Awakens I thought was a really fun, enjoyable blockbuster movie, with the only things holding it back being the fact that it has to fill in 30 years of backstory and it has to set up like three or four sequels or whatever, and I thought that worked to its detriment. But with Rogue One, we've got a self-contained story. We have a beginning, a middle, and an end, which I think The Force Awakens severely lacked. I thought it was just a middle of a story. We missed the beginning, we missed the end, we just have a middle, which kind of made it a little bit disappointing for me, but I still enjoyed it. But Rogue One is just going to be a beginning, middle, end story. And Gareth Edwards, while I didn't like monsters, and I thought Godzilla was pretty decent, I don't like much of J.J. Abrams' work. And Star Wars The Force Awakens turned out really well, so clearly the Disney touch is going to impact these filmmakers. Number 10, Deadpool. We saw him get butchered in X-Men Origins Wolverine, and hopefully we'll see the character done justice as 20th Century Fox give us a Deadpool movie that we've all been waiting for. Now, my trepidation with Deadpool is that the trailers, while enjoyable and fun, have been showing more or less the exact same action set pieces and most of the same jokes over and over again. We're a month away from Deadpool. Blimey, that's a scary thought. We're a month away from Deadpool, and we're seeing the same jokes in the TV spots. We're seeing this exact same action beats, just that bridge sequence. And while that does look good, I'm hoping for a little bit more than that. So we're dealing with one of two scenarios here. One, they're saving stuff for the movie, they're just putting the same bits in the trailer so that they don't spoil everything. Or two, they really don't have much to show because there's not a lot to the movie. I hope it's the first one. Either way, this looks like a riot. Number 9, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Yeah, this is, this is number 9. This barely cracked the top 10. Um, yeah, the movie looks good. It looks enjoyable. I'm sure I'll have a lot of fun watching Batman to try and find out if Superman can bleed or not, but 
Really, the last trailer did take a lot of the wind out of the movie sales for me. I don't like the what Lex Luthor is doing in those trailers. He just looks very, he just seems very, very grating. I think some of the incredibly, incredibly heavy-handed themes and some of the dramatic beats in the trailers are unintentionally funny, like the latest TV spot when Batman tries to hit Superman with the Batmobile and he just bounces off. It's like, Batman, why did you think that would work? And then Batman's like, tell me, do you bleed? And then Superman's just like, well, whatever. It's and then, so then Batman's like, oh, you will. It, it's like, it just looks unintentionally funny. And it, I'm just worried that it's going to take itself so seriously that we lose the fun. And the Doomsday reveal, not a good move, because now we basically know pretty much for certain that Superman is going to die at the end of the movie. I mean, I've, I don't have an official confirmation or anything, but there's only one reason you bring Doomsday into a movie, and that's to kill Superman. Like, it's, it's like having Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, he's going to break the Batman's back. That's the only thing Bane is known for. I'm sure we're going to get a visually arresting movie with great action set pieces, but anything more than that, I think the jury's still out on that one. Number 8, The BFG. It's a Spielberg movie. This is going to make my top 10. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't fawning all over Bridge of Spies, although I did really, really enjoy it, and I do pretty much line up for anything Steven Spielberg makes. But the BFG and Steven Spielberg, such a great combination. Spielberg does terrific fairy tale child mo and childhood movies, because great stuff. It's a great story by Roald Dahl, there's the famous UK animated version with David Jason as the BFG, and this time we've got Mark Rylance from Bridge of Spies as the BFG, that's a great casting choice. And of course we have the original screenwriter of E.T., Melissa Matheson, doing the screenplay for the BFG, unfortunately she passed away last year but she was able to finish the script before she died, and this is going to be, hopefully, a lovely tribute to her legacy, and if we get a movie that's in the vein of E.T., but it's the BFG, we're in for a good time. Number seven, we have a tie, Assassin's Creed, and Warcraft. The reason these two are tied is because, really, I'm looking forward to them both for the exact same reasons. I want to know if these are the movies that will usher in the era of great video game movies. The first trailer for Warcraft looked really, really good, and I do like how it's not just a black and white dynamic. The humans and the orcs do have good and bad. They're fighting for the same thing. And of course we've got Duncan Jones who did terrific with Moon, did terrific with Source Code, and for Assassin's Creed we've got Justin Kurzel who did Macbeth, which, while I don't think is an incredibly great Shakespeare movie, it, it had a lot of merits, it was visually beautiful, and Michael Fassbender was great in the movie, and Fassbender is also in Assassin's Creed, and I think he's a producer on the movie as well, so you have the prestige of these people working on these two, hopefully, great video game movies. I'm looking forward to the fallout of these movies more than anything, and I'm, I'm not going to say that because I want a fallout movie, but as in, once these movies come out, if they are good or if they succeed, what happens next? And I'm looking forward to that maybe more than the movies themselves. Number six, The Nice Guys. Yeah, unfortunately, this is the only original movie on the list. They don't really get a lot of promotion, at least at this time in the year if they're coming out later on. And The Nice Guys comes with a certain amount of prestige attached, which is why it's got uh, some modest anticipation, as well as a fantastic trailer. That first trailer, we have Shane Black, who is the director of Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and Iron Man 3. I loved almost everything about Iron Man 3. I think it's a, it's a genuinely terrific blockbuster, a great character-driven story. And so I'm naturally anticipating anything that Shane Black does, and he's doing the nice guys where Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe are a buddy cop pairing. The trailer was hysterically funny. The scene when Ryan Gosling is trying to shut the toilet door is everything from Russell Crowe breaking his arm um, when, when um, Ryan Gosling throws the gun. Just, just watch the trailer. It's just, it's just so much fun. That trailer is what put the nice guys on this list, and I think this could be the funniest movie of the year. Number 5, X-Men Apocalypse. Riding high off the success of X-Men First Class and X-Men Days of Future Past, Brian Singer returns to the franchise for X-Men Apocalypse, and the trailer that dropped a few weeks or a month ago was pretty superb. I love the trailer, I think the movie looks great. You have the momentum of following Days of Future Past as well as First Class. The cast are terrific, Fassbender, McAvoy, Oscar Isaac, Jennifer Lewis, this great cast doing what could be potentially weighty themes with the X-Men. These are message movies after all, and I think that the X-Men are going to be facing their biggest challenge yet. The first trailer looked great, let's hopefully see some more of Quicksilver. 
Really, uh, there's not much more to say. The quality on display so far is self-evident. Number 4, Kung Fu Panda 3. Yes, this is the only animated movie on the list. Uh, yes, I'm anticipating Kung Fu Panda 3 more than Finding Dory or Moana. I didn't really see that coming, but yet yeah, this franchise, this franchise is basically the epitome of don't judge a book by its cover, because Kung Fu Panda is an idea that is so stupid it could just go so wrong, but DreamWorks have hit it out of the park two times in a row. DreamWorks really know how to do sequels, Shrek 2 is better than Shrek 1, um, How to Train Your Dragon 2 is better than How to Train Your Dragon 1, Kung Fu Panda 2 is better than Kung Fu Panda, and while that movie was a big hit, I was kind of worried that it wouldn't get a sequel, that Poe's story would not continue, but it is happening, we're going to be meeting his family, Brian Cranston and Rebel Wilson are joining the cast, J.K. Simmons is the villain, and while the first trailer, at least the first UK, English language, US, American trailer, whatever, while that first trailer wasn't terrific, the Chinese trailer that dropped a couple of months ago is beautiful. That Chinese trailer has really sold me on this movie potentially being just as good as Kung Fu Panda 2, if not better. These movies have been superb, and Kung Fu Panda 3 looks to continue that legacy. And I can't believe it. I remember walking in, into the first Kung Fu Panda years ago and just thinking this is going to be terrible, and now I'm here years later genuinely looking forward to Kung Fu Panda 3 more than the new Star Wars, more than Batman v Superman, more than Deadpool. That's why it's number 4 on this list. Oh and incidentally, America gets Kung Fu Panda 3 at the end of January. We get it at the beginning of March. UK release dates are bullshit. Number 3, Captain America Civil War. Okay, we're at the top three now. Now, when I think of these lists, when I think of these most anticipated lists, I define them in the fact that if any of these movies were to be cancelled tomorrow, which one would I be most sad about? When it comes to Civil War, if that was cancelled, I'd be very sad. Obviously, the trailer looked great. I think the Russo brothers are going to do great with the material. I love Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans sparring off with each other. I love the concept of basically the whole supporting cast being Avengers because, hey, that's just the company that these guys hang out with. But in a sense, there is a bit of familiarity here. We have been here before. We have seen these characters kind of fight each other. Not, not to the extent that it's a feature-length movie, that it is a Civil War, but we've seen it before. We've seen these actors. We've seen these characters. The novelty is kind of wearing out, but the quality looks like it's still there. And this, it looks great. <laughs> it's, it's a Marvel movie. It's basically Avengers two and a half. I can't wait to see it. It looks great. But the next two movies are ones that I would genuinely miss. I would be pretty sad if they did get cancelled tomorrow. Number two, The Jungle Book. If it wasn't for that trailer, that trailer that dropped a few months ago, I don't even think this would have made my top ten. The Jungle Book trailer really really got me hyped. It looks like a technically gorgeous movie. The cast are terrific. Idris Elba, Ben Kingsley, God, I can't even think off the top of my head. I'm just drawing a blank. Bill Murray, Lupita Nyong'o, Christopher Walken as King Louie. This is just superb casting and the trailer looked terrific. Basically, uh, John Favreau said when he got on stage at D23 all those months ago that The Jungle Book would be possibly the most technically ambitious movie ever made. And after seeing the trailer, I'm inclined to believe him. It looks amazing. The Jungle Book story, while it's not exactly a compelling um, metatextual narrative or whatever, it's not particularly deep, I think it does give the opportunity to showcase gorgeous visuals, gorgeous landscapes. Bloody emails. The motion capture looks terrific. Christopher Walken as the orangutan King Louie. You look at his face and you see Christopher Walken's face there but it's still an orangutan. That's such a great balance, and I can't wait to see him talk and move and see if he really is the king. After what happened with Cowboys and Aliens, I was worried that Jon Favreau, as great a director as he is, might not land on his feet. And while Chef was good, I think we're dealing with Jon Favreau in his element, in these great technically advanced movies, pioneering new technology like he did with Iron Man, as well as even Zathura, there's some visual effects in Zathura that hadn't been seen before on the big screen. Jon Favreau was in his element, and I think we're in for a great time. There's only one movie that I am anticipating more in 2016. Number one, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Let me backtrack for a moment. 
Number 11 was Star Wars Rogue One, and I said that I don't quite have the emotional attachment that many people do have to the Star Wars franchise, which is why I'm not fawning over these films in terms of their hype. Their quality I love, but the hype I'm not quite on board with. But for fantastic reason where to find them. How you folks feel about Star Wars is how I feel about Harry Potter. It is kind of in my creative lifeblood. I do think that some of the Harry Potter movies were genuinely snubbed at the Oscars, particularly Deathly Hallows Part 2. I think they're technically amazing, filled with rich characters in a wonderfully detailed world. I've been to the Harry Potter studio tour, where you can see these tangible sets, these props. I even got a wand. I bought a wand from the Harry Potter studio tour. I dressed up as Remus Lupin for a Harry Potter themed birthday party a couple of months ago. I love almost everything about Harry Potter, the films. I enjoy the books quite a bit, but the films is an area where I live and breathe, and I just love this franchise, and David Yates did a spectacular job with the last few films, and the fact that we are not only returning to this universe, but we're telling a different story, we're seeing a completely different side to it. It's set decades, like nearly a century before the events of the first Harry Potter movie and their first Harry Potter book, so it's a new cast of characters. We have Eddie Redmayne as a Newt Scamander, and... When you think about this, Harry Potter is a prestigious franchise, but Eddie Redmayne, when he was filming Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, he was currently the defending champion for the Academy Award for Best Actor after The Theory of Everything. You've got literally the best actor on the planet to be the lead in the new Harry Potter spin-off prequel movie. But I just cannot wait to inhabit this world again, see a different, older side to it, with a new cast of characters, a new angle, and the fact that David Yates is returning after the terrific work he did with the last few, there's not much I can't get hyped about. And that first trailer, it didn't show a lot, but it was an announcement trailer. I can't wait to see more as we get closer and closer to the release of Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. And there we go, that's my top 12 most anticipated movies of 2016. Now, I'm not going to be doing a top 10 least anticipated. A lot, a lot of people have been asking that I do that, but in order to do a least anticipated list, I would literally have to talk about films I don't even know the existence of. That's kind of how it works. But what are you folks looking forward to in 2016? Did any of my picks uh, resonate with you? Are you feeling the same thing? Do you think that they should have been higher on the list? Of course, anticipation is all about subjectivity. Like I said, maybe Star Wars Rogue One will be so much better than Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, but I'm looking forward to one more than the other. And that's kind of how it works. So what are you folks looking forward to? Are there any original movies that you can't wait to see this year? The Nice Guys, uh, High Rise looks pretty interesting, though I do want to see more of it. Be sure to sound off in the comment section below, and while you're there, please hit that like button, because it really, really helps me out. Be sure to subscribe for more movie-related content, and be sure to keep up to date with my goings-on online on Facebook and Twitter. And if you subscribe, you'll be able to see when I do my top 10 best and my top 10 worst videos for 2015. 15, so be sure to do that so you know when, that, when I've made those videos. I'm going to be doing a vlog video every Monday or Tuesday from now on. This is going to be the first of those. I'm going to be taking Patreon vlog requests. So if you want me to talk about specific subjects, if you want to see me talk about uh, specific movies or whatever, just anything in general, even if it's just, you know, life lessons, I don't know. I don't know I can teach you. I can teach you to get into a small room and vlog. That's kind of how it works. But if you want to do that, then be sure to go to patreon.com forward slash Trilby to financially support me and help me and get some exclusive perks and rewards and such, because that really, really does help me out. So here's to 2016, and I'll see you folks next time. Ta -ta -ta